How do you legislate a technology that doesn't exist? That's the aim of a new bill introduced Thursday. The Bipartisan Fusion Energy Act will ensure the development of a re regulatory framework supporting the growth of commercial fusion. Right now, there are separate regulations for fission and fusion because there are fewer concerns about the latter, about waste and safety. It will also require the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to report to Congress within a year about licen licensing commercial fusion reactors. Hank Jenkins Smith joins us now. He's a professor of public policy at the University of Oklahoma and director of the Institute for Public Policy Research and Analysis. Thank you so much for being with us. You could hear me being careful between fusion and fission, um, which you'll help us keep untangled. But briefly, what is nuclear fusion and uh, how is it used to harness energy? So it's, it's good to think about the contrast between fission and fusion. Fission is the splitting of atoms to release energy. Fusion is the compression of atoms um, to fuse them into a single particle which releases energy that is then used to um, produce um, uh, electricity or heat or um, whatever it is that you're trying to generate with that, with that reaction. And Professor, I feel like I've been reading about and scientists have been chasing this white rabbit of fusion for decades. So how different is it now? And are we, has there been a breakthrough? Where are we on the breakthrough uh, question? Th that the, and there must have been something or else Congress wouldn't be trying to legislate it. Yes, well, there was a breakthrough. Um, and uh, that occurred at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, the, the NIF. Um, and that facility basically uses lasers and laser technology to compress a pellet um, in order to generate fusion. There's, there's another technology that uses magnets um, to create um, the high pressure, high energy environment. Um, uh, only the lasers have actually produced a, a positive net gain in, in energy from, uh, from one of those shots. The magnets are, are making good progress, but um, we haven't seen the same level of development there that we have with lasers. Um, in both cases, the theory um, is well developed. It's the technology. Um, it's the capacity to produce what the theory says will happen that is the challenge. So we're um, at a stage where it appears we're getting close, very close to the ability to produce um, energy with uh, fusion. Uh, and uh, so that makes for quite a bit of excitement. However, it's been, you know, for a long time, we've been on the, pre on the precipice <laughs> and we're, um, we hope to get to the point where um, we can actually generate um, usable energy sometime in the next decade. And is there, a, is there a big test? Is there a big next hurdle that is uh, basically a, the, the, this harnessing piece of the puzzle, or is it lots of hurdles? It's lots of hurdles. So on the magnet side, um, the research is broken down into a variety of different components. Some folks are working on um, how to generate the uh, startup of the fusion process. Um, others are working to manage the um, the way the um, energy, the field within which the energy is being generated is contained on the laser side. Um, the question is, how do you produce um, the repeated shots or the compressions with laser at, in order to reduce, produce energy in a fashion that is um, both sustainable and that um, can be contained in a, um, in a reactor to or in some kind of a vessel in order to produce produce the electricity. So it's spread over a variety of different um, efforts at research and development. It's it's pretty exciting because there's so many things going on at once. Um, and so we're in a pretty challenging phase. Um, there's no clear threshold, although we're seeing nice landmarks such as the uh, shots at, at NIF that produced net gain. Um, but there's there's a lot going on across the landscape. We've got quite a few startup companies that are working on um, different aspects of this. A uh, number of universities have extremely uh, exciting research projects underway. Um, and so that gives me some confidence. There's, there's more than one thing happening. Right. Well, <laughs> um, and that's what we love. Uh, more than one thing happening. It does sound exciting. Uh, Hank Jenkins-Smith with the University of Oklahoma. Thank you so much for helping us.